you are parents. Well, I'm a parent, I see a lot. I'm a parent of five beautiful children. So I would like to take you to a journey as a parent. So please close your eyes just for a couple of moments. Imagine to yourself, you're taking your five-year-old son for a journey in the city, for a nice day. You buy him a candy, he gives it to him, he unwraps that candy, puts it in his mouth. He's having a huge smile on his face. A couple of moments later, he stops. You look at him, and you see his son turning blue. He puts his hand around his neck, and he's choking. You're screaming for help. People all around you are coming. Everyone's looking at you, but no one knows what to do. You're begging people, please call for an ambulance. You're praying to God, please save my son, and that's when he collapsed on the floor. Every second seems like moments, like long moments, and you don't know what to do. And all of a sudden, on the corner of your eye, you see a man running towards you with an orange vest, just as like one I'm wearing. He's carrying a briefcase, an orange briefcase, and when he gets to you, he knees down to your son, and he starts taking care of him. Seconds pass by that seemed like minutes, and all of a sudden, you hear the sweetest voice you could possibly hear, the voice of your son crying. You run over to your son, you start kissing and hugging him. This man, meanwhile, gets up, takes his medical supplies, he puts it back in the bag, and he's about to leave. And you, sit, you stop him and you say, excuse me. He looks at you and you say, who are you? Are you a doctor? And he says, no, I'm a shoemaker. I work in the store right around the corner, but I'm also a volunteer paramedic. And I got an alert on my phone that some kid is choking, so I ran here by foot. And when I got here, I saw your son, and I was able to save him. Thank God he's okay. But I must go back to the store. I have customers waiting for me. <laughs> to those of you who have their eyes, who are disciplined and have their eyes closed, you could open it now. Well, I want to ask you a question. How many of you, if you know that you have a seven-year-old girl outside of where you are now, choking, would leave what you're doing now and run to save her? I see many, many hands here. And that's amazing to see how many people really care and how much goodness there is between the people here and the people around the world. So how do you harness all this goodwill and create a flash mob of lifesavers that could save little girl or little boy in the moments that are so crucial for them and save their lives by having this flash mob. How do you do this? So let me tell you my story. I grew up in Jerusalem, Israel. When I was a young 16-year-old boy, I went to volunteer in an ambulance. And as you could see, I had much more hair then. I loved it. It was a year and a half that I really enjoyed volunteering in the back of an ambulance, but I realized after one and a half years volunteering in an ambulance that I helped many people, but I never actually got to save anyone. By the time we got there, it was so late, so some people who really needed our help, they weren't breathing or had a real serious heart attack or even a car accident, we got there a few seconds or a few minutes too late. What changed my life was a story about a seven-year-old boy who his mother called for help when he was eating lunch and he was choking. And it took us 21 minutes to arrive. When we came in, we saw the mother on the floor next to her son crying and begging us to save his life. I was only 16. I was crying with her while I was doing CPR. A man runs into the house moments later and he says, I'm a doctor. I live around the corner. I saw an ambulance parked here. I want to help you. And he was helping us for a while. And after a while, he said, I am so sorry to say, but this kid is not alive anymore. Just bring a sheet to cover him. That moment was the worst moment for my life. I realized that that doctor lived a block away, but he didn't know about the emergency till we arrived. And that's when I said to myself, ambulance don't save lives. People save lives. Communities save lives. How do we take these people <laughs> How do we take these people who are willing to go save other people and notify them before an ambulance arrives to save these people while the ambulance is stuck in traffic? So I went over to the ambulance organization where I volunteered, and I tried convincing them to share the information with me as a volunteer when I'm home. 
I'll buy a pager, just send me the information when someone's in trouble so I could go save these kids or people, whatever it is. And guess what? They said no. They said when someone needs help, they must get an ambulance. So I decided as a child, I was 16 years old, to use Israel's best innovation in Yiddish, it's called chutzpah, in English it's called sass, and here you call it jugard, right? <laughs> and I decided I'm gonna buy illegal walkie-talkie scanners, and I'll tap into their emergency calls and listen to the, to the ambulances when they send out the ambulance and the address. And I will know way before them where the address is and get there. If you remember Batman, that's how he listened to the police and he was able to go to emergencies. That's what I did, but I did it for ambulances. And that's how I started, that's how I started United Hatsala. United, you all know what it is, uniting people all around me. And Hatsala means rescue in Hebrew, save. Well, it's taking people all around me, training them and actually getting them to get to the scene in the first 90 seconds. So how do you do that? You need four very important elements. The first element, the first, these are the people, and the first element you need is training. You need to take people and train them to be volunteers, to actually know what to do in every type of emergency. The second thing you need is medical supplies, just like this. A bag with all the medical supplies you need to save someone. The third thing is you need transportation. Volunteers, could use their own cars. You know, you, you see Uber, Uber drivers use their own cars to transport people. Hatsela, United Hatsela is a volunteer corps. We don't charge money, we don't, we don't transfer people, but we could use our own cars. But you could also use your bicycle, or you could even run by foot. But if you're really, really brave, and I know a lot of brave people here, you could actually use this incredible thing called an ambulance. This I created in Israel. I realized ambulances get stuck, cars get stuck, but these motorcycles never get stuck. So I created this box. It has all the medical supplies here. It even has the siren and everything. And you get there quicker than anything. In a mission of 90 seconds, this is what helps. So the last thing that's so important is information. I used to use Jugar to get to emergencies, listening into the ambulances. Today, we have technology. We get, with our technology, the most incredible technology, the closest five volunteers to every emergency get alerted basically according to where they are. So this shoemaker or you get alerted basically if someone's having a heart attack next to you, you know you're close, you run there, you treat them, and then you go back home or go back to work. That's the most important thing, the information. So where are we now? We are all over Israel. I started with 15 volunteers. We have over 6,000 volunteers in Israel now. <laughs> Jews. Jews, if you realize I'm Jewish, but I have Muslim friends in Israel who volunteer with me. I have Christians, I have Druze, every type of person who wants to be a volunteer could volunteer. Men and women and every religion run together to save lives. The closest five people, no matter who you are. And we get there in less than three minutes to every emergency nationwide, and some cities were under 90 seconds now. But we're not only in Israel. We are now traveling around the world. We're in 21 countries. We, we helped and established in many countries. And we just finished doing this in Jersey City. This is a very complicated city. Response time now in Jersey City is two minutes and 35 seconds for an emergency. So now my goal is to go the rest of the world. In India, 1.2 billion people. I can't even say that. It's so much. Think about it. How many people here need you guys to help their, save their lives. So really, our goal is to go everywhere, including here in India, and I just see the traffic outside, and I imagine how many people suffocated for death by, by the time the ambulances get. And I promise you, in India, the ambulance services will be very happy when you come and offer help. Well, my goal is to take all of you and join them into my life-saving flash mob and save millions and millions of people. So I would love each one of you to take upon yourself to volunteer and to actually train to become an EMT or a first responder or a paramedic. Then buy a little bag with some medical supplies. That's all you need. Put it in the back of your car or take it on the bicycle, whatever it is. And then go over to the ambulance service in your local places, no matter where it is in the world, 
Convince them to share their emergency calls with you. And then all of us together will save millions of people, millions of people every day around the world that otherwise would not survive, thanks to the life-saving flash mob of United Hatzalah. Thank you very much. Namaste.